Hello, everyone, and welcome to Women in Leadership Talk. We have a fabulous podcast lined up for you today, and we have Peggy Klaus joining us today. Peggy, where are you dialing in from? Santa Fe, New Mexico, Vicki. Oh, love it, love it, love it. That's such a pretty area. I used to have a store there. Yeah, that's a great area. I know, I know. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> Uh, and I want to welcome our audience. You're dialing in from all over the world. And so thank you for that. And we appreciate so much that you take time to listen to the Women in Leadership Talk podcast. And we're always interested to hear what stories you want to learn about. And today, Peggy has a arsenal full of wonderful tips and tricks that she's going to share with us. But let me just give you a little bit of insight on Peggy. Um, you may have seen her on national news or pop the popular morning shows. Perhaps you've read her advice column in the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal or Fortune Magazine, Harvard, Harvard Business Review or O Magazine. Well done, Peggy. I love that. <laughs> She's touching an audience broad, broad, broad and far. She's also the author of two best-selling books, Brag, The Art of Tooting Your Own Horn Without Blowing It. I've had the honor to read that and it was fantastic. And the hard truth about soft skills, workplace lessons smart people wish they'd learned sooner. So two phenomenal, phenomenal books. I'm assuming, Peggy, they can find that on Amazon, Barnes and Noble at the bookstore or any of their, probably any local bookstore as well. Um, highly recommend like, you know, reading the book on brag. And so I'm going to turn it over to Peggy. Let her tell us a bit about your story. You've had a very fascinating journey and what has led you to where you are today. So tell me, tell me all about it. Well, first, let me say thank you, Vicki, for inviting me. I am so thrilled to be talking to you. I've been listening to your uh, broadcasts and they're just wonderful. Oh, thank you. Um, you know, as I think about my career, I think like most everyone I know, I've had an accidental career, meaning mm -hmm. that I didn't grow up knowing from age six that I wanted to be a consultant or a speaker or a coach. And actually, I thought I was going to follow in my dad's footsteps and be a lawyer. But in college, despite majoring in political science and working for Ralph Nader, I got very interested in theater and singing and found myself picking that route going to London for graduate school and then working both in New York and then Hollywood as a producer, director, and talent coach. Wow. And um, while in Hollywood, I worked on sitcoms and I had a good time and learned a lot, but I found that that work wasn't really my purpose in life. Mm -hmm. So I took both my communication and leadership skills into the corporate world and have worked since then almost, oh my God, 30 years with thousands of professionals from C-suiteers to first line managers, helping them really to thrive in their careers. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. And you said several things there that like really tweaked my interest. I mean, one is that purpose. And sometimes we won't always know what our purpose is until we actually get into things, right? right. Um, I think that's such an important message. And you never know where your path is going to lead you. So, you know, I think that's similar to you, you know, my own story, I started out in retail, and then years and years later, all these different experiences has landed me where I'm at today. And, and so our young people, I know, struggle with trying to figure out what path do I take? Don't worry about it. Just pick a path and then they might change in a few years. <laughs> it will. It will change. You know, people have multiple pivots and multiple jobs and multiple careers. And it really is the way of, you know, uh, the world now, you know, and I always have to laugh when I work with young people who are just out of college or graduate school and they say, well, I know what I'm going to be. I'm going to be X. And I say, I'll talk to you in about 10 years. <laughs> that still holds true. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's so true. It's so true. And, you know, so that unique story, let's, let's get into that because you, you talk about this in your book, right? And that, that the finding your why of sharing what you're sharing and, and creating your bragalogue, which I love that terminology. I think that's fantastic. So Talk to us about that and how you go about finding that unique story. Yeah. Um, 
Well, I guess for me, um, around the acting and the singing, I loved the performing. I also loved finding out what was unique and special about either the broadcast talent I worked with or the musicians or the actors or comedians, and then bringing that out and taking that to market. Mm -hmm. I loved those two things about what I was doing. And then I got to just translate those skills to my work that I've been doing, you know, as I said, for the last 30 years and added also women in leadership to that as well. And I think what has really led me and and certainly created uh, and developed my interest in, I'm going to put this in air quotes for all your audiences, bragging yeah. artfully and graciously, is that I was seeing about 10 years into my work that business professionals were having a really difficult time talking positively about themselves in a way that was interesting and entertaining and made the listener want to listen to them. And I also knew how critical it was in terms of their success. And I knew that they would stall or derail in their career if they did not learn how to do this. And so um, I started to think back about how I grew up. I had a father who told me so many times, I can't even count, not to toot my own horn, that if I was doing <laughs> a good job, people would recognize me and reward me. And guess what? Mm. Uh, I don't know how many of your listeners have been in Hollywood, but it is the tooting capital of the world. So uh, I was headed to really living in my car if I did not expand that mindset about talking about myself. I mean, I, in my senior high school, I just remembered this the other day, I ran for senior class president and I didn't even vote for myself. And it was a closed ballot box, Vicki. And I was scared that, you know, someone was gonna find out that I voted for myself. Yeah, that's that that I think that's very common, right? Because we want to be seen as, you know, that humble person or that person who doesn't brag. And and so important what you just said about being gracious as you express who you are and what you've accomplished because you you have done it, so it's yours, right? <laughs> well, it's very funny because as as I was thinking about and preparing for our time together, uh, I was given this uh, little plaque. Oh, love it. <laughs> and it says, it ain't bragging if you can do it. And the funny thing about that is that Walt Whitman, Dizzy Dean, and Will Rogers all claimed that saying. Oh, interesting. So, right? Is that funny? <laughs> they, so they stole it from each other. I don't know in which order they stole it. Um, but it is so critical for me in my work, Vicki, to um, help people recognize their talents, the wonderful things about them, and then be able to talk about them and share them both on a personal as well as professional basis. So that's really a um, value of mine. Yeah. Well, I, I feel that as you say it. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, when you when I was reading your book, um, there was a lot of emphasis around the head and the heart connection. Um, and, and that's so important because I think what you were just describing there, Peggy, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but when you are speaking about yourself from a heart place, it doesn't come across as obnoxious or egotistical. It comes across as graceful and beautiful. Um, and so, you know, even asking ourselves, where is that messaging coming from? Uh, I think is, is such a powerful place as an individual to, to, to be and to connect with your true self, right? Absolutely. Well, it comes from what I call bragging myths that we've all grown up with, cultural, societal, religious, familial. And it says to each of us in different ways, um, 
it's it's a it's bad it's a sin uh pride cometh before the fall humility is a virtue which is a lovely virtue Mm -hmm. but not when it makes you ineffectually humble Mm -hmm. and that yet people look at bragging or talking about oneself self-promotion as in two camps one is either uh they find people oh um disgusting self-aggrandizing obnoxious boring and then on in the other camp is humble and uh meek and i say to them is there not a middle ground yeah, exactly so yeah. how, how do you help that person find the middle ground like well I, yeah yeah i think first you have to acknowledge what are those myths that yeah. you are still dragging around with you mm. because they may be what i call those shadows that you're not even aware of and to really bring those out into the light so you know what it is you're up against. And then um, thinking about bragging the good way as talking about yourself or an accomplishment in a short, pithy, conversational manner using a few tidbits of information, what I call those brag bites, which you Mm -hmm. read about in the book, (laughs) that are woven together in a memorable story said with energy and enthusiasm and delight. Yeah. Oh, love that. (laughs) So that is really it. Note, short, pithy, conversational, not giving uh, a laundry list, as we often hear many bad braggers say, I've done this, I've done this, oh, I do this, oh, uh, and I'm going to run the New York City Marathon on Sunday and cure cancer in the afternoon. At the same time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And your eyes roll back in your head and you go, oh, I got to get out of here, <laughs> and which is absolutely the way you should feel. But these stories are what I call these, these braggalogues which will bring out the best of you in a very artful and gracious and graceful way. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. That I think that's super helpful because I don't know, like in, in the work that I do, I find, especially with women, we, we tend to dismiss even our accomplishments. Right. And well, and, and I think about myself, even when, you know, uh, you know, well, as an example, when I was running one company and we won one of the global country awards and I was like, oh, it's not me. <laughs> right. I, I truly, I was like, it wasn't me. And so I had my whole team come up and cause it was a team effort, right? It was everybody, but I didn't allow myself to take credit for the role that I played in assimilating this team and, you know, encouraging this team and pulling the strengths out of these individuals and, you know, and, and so I say that because we often do dismiss what our role is in that accomplishment and, and we will make excuses <laughs> for everybody else. Absolutely. I have, uh, I, I will give you a quick example. <clears throat> I was uh, facilitating a session for about 75 very senior women who were looking to get on boards And I asked a volunteer to get up and give us her name and tell us what she does. And she uh, did get up there, told us all her name. She said she uh, worked at a software company and uh, did this, that, and the other. And then she stopped dead Mm. as though she had seen a ghost. And she said, Peggy, I forgot to tell you that I founded the company. Wow. At which point, Vicki, all 75 women started to, you know, that laugh that's kind of so uncomfortable. You know, I dropped to my knees. I raised my arms and I (laughs) screamed, you 
buried the lead. Oh. And I got up and I said to those women, I said, I know that was part humor and part dismay because all of you would do that. And if if she were a man, that would be the first thing out of her mouth. 100%. Yes. Yes. And this is not unusual, Vicki. Oh, I know. I know, Peggy. And and I mean, that's why the work you're doing in, in helping people learn how to gracefully do that is so important. And even just recognizing what your strengths are, what your those achievements, like getting comfortable with yourself. Like often I'll tell clients to you know, create a brag book or whatever you want to call it, a brag book, your achievements, your toot your horn, your woohoo book, whatever you need. Cause there are those tough days, right? When you need to go back. Cause there's, there's somebody not, you know, seeing what you see and you go back and read that and go, Oh yeah, I did that. Oh, I did that. Yeah. I started that company. Look at me go. <laughs> so that's what I call the brag bag, that if your listeners put on their computer folder brag bag and every week go into it as many times as they have things to brag about, P clients, customers saying wonderful things about them, colleagues complimenting them, bosses, supervisors, um, successes, obstacles they've overcome, then they can bring that out again, very artfully in conversations and also performance reviews and conferences and wherever they happen to be. Well, to your point, like, because you talked about the brag bites that gives you the fuel that you need to create your, so your brag bag helps create your brag bites, right? Like that is, see, I'm quick, Peggy, I'm learning here. <laughs> this is awesome. Well, and you know, one of the things you talk about in your book is looking out for number one, right? And, and you kind of mentioned earlier about hoping somebody's going to see you, hoping somebody will recognize your work. Like why, I don't care what age or stage you're at in your career. Like that is so important to put yourself out there, right? Yeah. And it's something that women do not do. We have been taught to look out for everyone else. And so saying, look out for number one, I remember writing this 20 years ago, and it was even hard for me. Um, and friends of mine and my editor really pushed me to say this because it sounds so dark and so, so unbelievably self-serving, doesn't it? I mean, uh, because we've been taught the other way, but looking out for yourself doesn't mean that you don't look out for others as well. Exactly. It's not an, and it, it's not, it's an, and not a, but it's yeah. not an either or. And the truth is, and this is hard for women to really get is that no one is going to care more about your success mm. and your happiness than you do. Yeah. Oh, Peggy, that's so true. And I, and I love how you frame that with the, it's not a, um, it's, it's, it's an, and not a, but, um, that is so important and countless stories, actually, as you were just saying that I had a flood of, <laughs> you know, memories that came in where like, a, you know, one of my clients way up in one of the banks, new boss comes in and he said to her, oh, just so you know, I am going to fire you. She hadn't even met him yet. And she was like, what? Like powerhouse woman, overachiever. And he's like, yep, just so you know, I'm going to fire you. She was speechless, right? But she was so worried about doing the, like doing stuff versus talking about what she does that she lost sight of looking out for number one, right? Like, mm -hmm. I mean, the first thing I would have done in that situation would have been like, okay, help me understand that. How are you coming to that conclusion? <laughs> right. You don't know me, but then I'd be, I'd be going around the building promoting myself, or I would have already done that actually. Right. Yeah. So that is important because even as awesome as a contributor that you might be, those situations happen and they happen a lot.
And so how are you creating those relationships, those connections so that people know who you are and they know what those accomplishments are before that ever happens? Right. And if you don't tell them, they don't know. And so we have to be vigilant, not obnoxious, but vigilant about doing that. And one of the things that has really come up since the pandemic is, well, how do I do this virtually? Mm -hmm. And it is a different ball game in a way, not entirely, um, because a lot of businesses are now going back at least part time. Yeah. But um, as I used to say to people when we were in the office full time, is that you had to be seen and you had to be heard. And so whether it be in what I call a flyby, when someone flies by you in the hall or at the coffee machine or the water cooler or the cafeteria, to be able to have a flyby, a short, again, very pithy um, answer to, so what are you up to, Val? You know, like, tell me, what are you, what are you doing? You know, and instead of going, oh, well, not much, not bad. Right. Or I'm busy. <laughs> right, right. Oh, I'm really busy. That you're able to have a brag bite there. Oh, it's been wonderful. I've been working on this, you know, project that's going really well. But, and then that person takes that with them, you know? And so virtually, what I tell people is that, uh, if they're leading the meeting, that they should institute a little bragathon before the meeting starts. Oh, so that love everybody, that. Everybody can check in and have a you know 30 seconds, 60 seconds to say what's going on in their world, what they've accomplished, right? So then so then you multiply the self-promotion and people will then know what you're doing. Um and if not, suggest it to your boss to do that. Make sure that you write short little emails when you have an obstacle you've overcome. Um, you know, you you have to keep doing this. Or as I said earlier, Ricky, you will stall or derail your career. Yeah, agreed, agreed. But there's also, it, it, how do I... <laughs> It's the investment you're making in yourself, right? Because there's such a ripple effect that happens when you create those brag bites and have your brag bag, because that removes a lot of the self-doubt, you know, like if there's an opportunity that opens up and you go, oh, am I ready? Because that's another one of our things we do, right? Do we check off, you know, 95, 98%? No, like, so look at what you've accomplished, right? And it, it builds that confidence up to be able to say, hey, pick me. You know right. what? I'd be fantastic in that role. Let me tell you what I've accomplished. Here's what I've done. That makes me the right person. And how many times have I watched as, um, you know, a new stretch assignment or role comes up and the men in the room will raise their hand. Always. Know, wave it enthusiastically they don't have nearly the amount of experience or expertise and a woman is saying well you know I, I really think I need to um take another year uh maybe I should get a master's in this I'm not quite sure mm -hmm. and it's all that which I work a lot with women on as I'm sure you do around the imposter syndrome and confidence and it's just so sad to me. Uh, now, I did a survey uh, about a year ago, <clears throat> and I sent it to, see, how, how young were the youngest? Zs. And the oldest was my 100-year-old voice coach. Fantastic. And, <laughs> isn't that wonderful? And I asked all of them, what characteristic? do you wish you had had growing up mm. or that you ha or that you wish you had now and every single woman in the hundreds said confidence yeah. at which point i 
stored myself under my desk in despair because this was still the issue. And that's why I created a course around being unstoppable and dealing with these shadows that we deal with. And bragging is just right up there. It is. You're so right. And I I am with you on the confidence piece because often Peggy clients come to me and they'll say, oh, Vicki, um, I want to transition or I want to do this or I want to do that. Whatever the objective is, it always comes back to confidence always. Mm -hmm. And, and so the underlying is how do we build that confidence? Um, And, and it's there. (laughs) We just got to get rid of some of the stories that we tell ourselves. Right. So to your point that that shadow that's lurking, make it your friend, (laughs) right? Like, Help it fuel you and prove it wrong and just show that, you know, you don't have to be tied to what those stories are. Um, but that's beautiful the way you describe that. And and that takes me, if I remember, if I read this correctly in your book, you have a self, is there a self-evaluation that you have on your website, I think? Yes, I think it is there. We've repositioned the website, but I think okay. it's, it's a 12, take 12 self-assessment. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, if, if the audience, if you have questions about, you know, where you are with your bragging and and confidence level, that might be an opportunity to, um, you know, to check out Peggy's website and, and take the evaluation and just see how it comes back for you. Um, Anytime we can help ourselves, I think that's, I think that's so important, right? Even if we take that one step, Mm -hmm. it's a step forward and believing in ourselves and loving ourselves, uh, because you are the most important. <laughs> I truly believe that. <laughs> so Peggy, maybe I, I just, I watch our time because I know we have, you know, we're, we've got lots to share here, but maybe um, let's share an example of how someone might brag without it being obvious. So maybe, can we do an example? Um, okay. Have you pulled any from... Well, I'm just thinking of one that I didn't pull one from your book, but um, sure. Hmm. What do you have one from your book that we could? Well, use? I um, I'll I'll try one of mine right. that you know when people say, "So, who are you? What do you do? <laughs> what do you do, Peggy?" <laughs> just you know, and I say, "Well." Um, I work with leaders of companies from Fortune 500, midsize and startups who are doggedly committed to enhancing their impact in the world through Mm -hmm. communication and leadership. And because many of the folks that I work with sit in this C-suite, my niece has recently taken to calling me the tyrant of tyrants. I think it's a compliment, but the jury is still out. And that's- I, love it. <laughs> I love it. Awesome. Awesome. That is, that's great. So it gives it, you could take, it can interpret that many different ways. Right. right. Uh, and so I, I love that you have said that. And, you know, one of the other things that I remember reading in your book is about being prepared. Right. And sorry, I kind of threw you off there a little bit on that example, but I thought that was beautiful. So being prepared, you've got brag bites, you've got brag bag, um, you know, helping your your leader to create those moments of bragathons. What else can somebody do to prepare, uh, especially in that situation where they're out of sight? Okay, so bragalogs uh, is a term that I made up that combines monologue with those little brag bites, those little nuggets. And um, the way that, you know, bragalog could be something where someone says, um, Vicki, so what do you do, right? And then, which is really, uh, when I started the book, that's what I started to go after because what I found, Vicki, is that professionals have such a difficult time answering that in any kind of story story-like, interesting manner. They'll give you monosyllabic, monotone answer. Well, I'm a financial advisor. Well, 
not so interesting, doesn't make me want to jump up and ask some more questions. So they've got to be prepared to answer the question. So what about you? What, who are you? What do you do? And this question we get asked, especially as Americans in Europe, not so much, but as Americans, we get asked this question a lot. You sit next to a person on, on a plane, a guy, yeah. uh, uh, I just came back from North Carolina. The guy taps me on the shoulder, my partner uh, in the next seat. And he says, so um, I couldn't help but, you know, looking at your computer which made me a little nervous, but then I said, oh, well. Um, and he <laughs> said, I, I, I'm thinking you're uh, an executive or a consultant. And I said, well, actually, um, I'm both, which I guess makes me like a corporate mutt because I own my own communications and leadership firm. And I um, work with you know, um, business professionals um, in communication and leadership. So um, you got to be ready at, at those moments and you can write them out and then get them out on your tongue, uh, paraphrase them so they and, and say them in lots of different ways so that they don't become rote, memorized, boring, uh, brag -a -log in a can is what I call it. And uh, so then if people are going... Um, you know, using their brag bags and writing down a little thing that they've done for a compliment, then they can write that or express it in those meetings with people. Mm. Oh, maybe I just want to tell you, I had a great win this morning. Da, 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 da. The other thing can, that people can do as they're dipping their toe into the bragging water, Vicky, is that they can... Start out by first bragging about their team and their accomplishments and then weaving in their own brag bites. So, uh, for example, pull one out of my head. Um, we had this big project looming over us. The deadline was moved up by a week. And so I had to reposition and delegate people to different and additional tasks but the entire team was so spectacular in coming together. They worked night and day and I just presented it to the client and they were thrilled. Right. Awesome. So, but, but to your point earlier in our discussion, it didn't become a three little pig. We, 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 <laughs> it became about we and I. And me. <laughs> Yeah. Me. We and me. Love that. Me and me. Love it. And they can also use a use a, a little brag a log to uh, talk about how the listener who they're talking to has helped to make them or the team more successful. Mm -hmm. uh, you've been incredibly helpful in making this project successful. First, by trusting us with the project and then by being there for guidance. So this is a way for them to start dipping their toe in. Love that. Love that. And and so, you know, I would encourage or invite our audience to be thinking about how do you start to dip your toe in? How do you take those little brag bites and, and start to practice those? Um, I think that's so important because we don't have to go from zero to, you know, a <laughs> hundred <laughs> quickly, like just little bits at a time. Cause it, it, you know, think about what your discomfort is. Like, you know, how did it, how did it feel when you rolled off your tongue? Uh, what felt good? What didn't feel good? Right. And, and why didn't it feel good if it didn't feel good? Those are important reflections I think to, to take Peggy. And I love that. Uh, I, I love that you've, you know, created this book and, and you're sharing how to make that four little word more authentic. <laughs> I think that's that's super important. Um, and then just just before we wrap up, one other thing I, I really want to hear about is the techno bragging. What is what is techno bragging? Well, you know, it's funny we got into it uh, much later than the book was written because the mm. book came out in two thousand three. So the techno bragging is really all the emailing the zooming uh, that we're doing now 
Okay. It's interesting. Again, keeping it short, pithy, thinking about, and I tell my clients to tune into the radio station, W-I-F-T-F-M. What's in it for them? Uh, really identifying what your audience really needs to hear from you. Because we've all been in the presence, Vicki, of people who just cannot stop themselves. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's horrible. It's hard, right? I mean, someone comes towards you that you know at a, at a conference and you think, oh, dear God, this is going to be a long one. So you okay. immediately <laughs> Do a 180 back to the bar to get another gin and tonic. And it's just, it's just what happens. So knowing that short, pithy, uh, focused on who your audience is, is so crucial. Love it. Love it. Love it. So Peggy, tell us where our audience can find you. They, I'm sure they're going to have more questions. So we want to make sure they have a, a way to reach out and talk to you. So where do they find you? Oh, and I would love them to go to my website, Peggy Klaus. They can find me uh, and um, sign up for newsletters that come out every month on topics that I think are important for business professionals to know and work on. Um I, you mentioned Amazon, Barnes and Noble, they can get the book. Um, I think that might be it. LinkedIn, are you on LinkedIn? I am on LinkedIn. Right, that's you. always a that's always a good one. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Woo. Um yes, LinkedIn. And I do have an Instagram thing, but I have not been uh doing it as much as I could or should, but I am going to address that. Yeah, I'm, I'm guilty as well, Peggy. So don't feel bad. LinkedIn, I'm I'm on often, and Instagram, I don't as much. But I I want I want to get better at that too, because I think that's an important audience to, um, you know, just to we all need to be more aware of how we fuel ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, this conversation today is an invitation to dip your toe, <laughs> as Peggy said, dip your toe into creating those brag bites and your brag bag that will serve you greatly, regardless of your profession. It also serves you personally, right? Because it is about us recognizing our worth and challenging that imposter syndrome that comes up. So thank you, Peggy. This has been just terrific. Terrific. <laughs> I have had a wonderful time. I hope we get to do it again soon. Oh, me too. <laughs> I'm out to Santa Fe, Vicki. <gasps> Would love that. Would love that. Okay, audience, you heard her. <laughs> <laughs> she did the invite. May have to do that, especially when the weather gets cold here. <laughs> um, oh, um, thank you, Peggy. This has been fantastic. And audience, thank you. I appreciate you being here today and taking part in this conversation. Uh, please do share this with a friend. Like if you see someone who needs support in how to gracefully brag about themselves, share this podcast with them. It's it's super helpful. And if you need to do, you know, if you want to do a self-evaluation, go on Peggy's website and take that self-evaluation to give you some insight. Um, the other thing I would add is if you're looking at your leadership, we have a free quiz on Women in Leadership Empowered that you can take. That's 1L in Will Empowered. And take that free quiz. It'll give you insight as to how you're showing up. It also helps you identify those areas of confidence that you might be struggling with. It's free. It's an opportunity for you to learn about yourself. And so, you know, we share that with you and hopefully that comes in handy. So thank you, everyone. Have a fabulous day. And Peggy, enjoy your time in Santa Fe. <laughs> thank you.